like that one. Best I can do this week. People just never die when it suits you. <laughs> do they, Doctor? Oh, beg your pardon, uh, Baron. You don't have to count it. It's all there. Always is, always is. See you next week. Lynch, yeah. I may need you sooner than next week. Something very special this time. Oh, I like that. Very special. Uh, has a ring of money to it, eh? I want a corpse dead no longer than six hours. Two hundred. No, five hundred. Three hundred. Done. Let's say I'm a patron of science. But I can't promise. Results, not promises. Uh. I don't understand your trusting him so much. Money, Charles, is a miracle drug for people like Lynch. Such a grotesque dream. Or perhaps, perhaps he shall be a nightmare. Would it matter? Not to me, not if I can give him life. That's worth anything, anything. Including your own life? Even that. To succeed in creating life is the ultimate achievement. To hesitate, to fear, to doubt now would make everything I've ever done pointless, empty. This, this is my life. But to create life, should man leave that to God? Here on earth, man is God. <laughs> Go to bed, Charles. Ten, you'll arrive in the morning. You'll want to look your best. <laughs> Good night. What will you tell her? Nothing. She will make it more imperative that we complete our work. Now. Yes, she will. Charles! Well, Tanya. <laughs> well, I thought I would at least deserve a hello. I'm sorry, Tanya. I'm very happy to see you. Your father and I were always happy to see you. Uh, here, let me help you. Thank you. How lovely you look. <laughs> Thomas! Thomas, come here. Uh. Thomas? <laughs> Would you please take Mademoiselle's luggage? Take the luggage inside. Luggage inside, eh? Tanya? <laughs> It's so sad about Thomas. He's a fine lad, normal in every way except for his brain. An accident? No fever, actually. As a child, it left him well. So, a gentle soul. He's very good with the animals. He loves them. I imagine they love him, too. What a waste. Such a handsome young man. Your father is still dressing. He worked rather late last night. As usual. Is he still experimenting with animal transplants? Well, you know how he is. He's been at it for 20 years. He'll be at it for another 20, but uh, tell me about the university. Well, except for my studies, it was rather boring. But I didn't go there to socialize. Aren't you pleased? I'm like my father, stubborn. When I want something, I get it. And I did. First of my class, I'm now a licensed surgeon. Congratulations, oh. doctor. Father! Father! 
Oh, so Bye, nice to see girl. you. <laughs> 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 Is that the way for a licensed surgeon to behave? This one does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Jack Morgan. Poor son of a bitch. They're gonna hang him good. Snap his neck for sure. What about it, Simon? You and Harry with me? Oh, poor son of a bitch, Jack Morgan. Nope, never did like him, though. Neither did you, right? I'm waiting, yes or no. Yeah, I'm with you, Tom. And Harry? Where I go, he goes. Uh, toast to Jack Morgan. Long may he die. <laughs> <laughs> and when Professor Muller objected to my theory, I stood like St. George facing the dragon. And believe me, Professor Muller was all dragon. My classmates sat glued and frozen to their seats, anticipating God knows what. And I told that narrow-minded intellectual just how narrow his mind was. Here, Professor... It is men like you with the imagination of an ostrich burying their heads in the sands of superstition every time a new idea is exposed who have kept science and medicine locked in the cellar of the alchemist's shop. <laughs> and then I said, I shall not set foot in your classroom again until you have apologized to me for your completely subjective and insulting remarks. Good day, Herr Professor. Then I turned it. <laughs> but... Uh, you have heard this story many times before. It doesn't matter, Father. It's a charming story. You know, Father, the name Frankenstein still echoes through the halls of the university. I'm not surprised, but I stopped caring about those fools when I left them with their hands clapped over their ears 30 years ago. Please sit down, Charles. Your leg must be tired. No, it's fine. Thank you. Was it difficult? I mean, very difficult being my daughter. Sometimes. Mostly it was my being a woman. The professors have a lot of old-fashioned ideas about a woman's place. I'm sure you will make a fine surgeon. Thank you, Charles. But I do not want to be merely a fine surgeon. What do you want? To assist you, Father, in your work. You know, since I was a youngster, I was always interested in your experiments. Each summer when I was here, I... I would sneak into your laboratory. But it was always locked. I know. But I discovered the other way. The one through the wall. The bedroom wall. Huh. Well, you little devil. I was always curious. I still am. I'm curious to see how far you have progressed and to show you my own progress. I shall be delighted to discuss it with you, of course, as doctor to doctor. Good. But I must warn you that my ideas are quite radical. Even more so than yours, Father. Really? Of course. I am my father's daughter. <laughs> you are referring to uh, animal transplants? Human. Thomas? You startled me, Thomas. Never mind. Oh, what do you call it? What is its name? Hmm? No name. Thomas, do you like my father? Hmm? My father, the Baron, do you like him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even when he takes the animals away from you? The animals. The Baron. The Baron takes the animals oh, from you. Oh, 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 oh. No, take. No, not me. The Baron. He takes the animals away from you. No. No, take. What's wrong, Thomas? <laughs> that man? Bad. 
Bad. Is he a bad man? Bad. Why another hundred? This order is very delicate. There are certain people that have to be paid in advance. What people? <laughs> well, Baron, you know, I can tell you. Professional ethics. Don't speak to me of ethics. If you want what you want, it will cost you another hundred. The way I see it, Baron, you don't have any choice. I'll have to get it for you. Take your time and don't worry. I won't sit down. I wouldn't want to damage this uh, wonderful furniture. Excuse me. I was... I was looking for my father. Uh, would that be Dr. Marshall? It would not. Well, I never thought the Baron had it in him. But Dr. Marshall would. Hmm. No, not on his best night. A drink, eh? Much too early. Never too early. For anything. My dear sir, you are an obnoxious man. Extremely vulgar. And I'm certain that whatever you are thinking is merely fantasy on your part. I would say that you spend too much time alone in your fantasies. Yeah. Be careful. It will soften your brain far quicker than whiskey. Yeah. How can somebody so lovely be such a bitch? Depends on the company I'm with. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a visitor. Mr. Lynch? Yes? I will see you out. Always a pleasure to talk to a lady. Good day, lady. Father, I said I was sorry. I heard you. Oh, yeah. Two hundred now. Yeah. 200 on delivery. Yeah. When will it be? Very soon. When? The hanging Jack Morgan day after tomorrow. So? So he's your man. Come to Barry Not to praise him. I don't suppose you'll be missing Jack Morgan very much. About as much as I would miss you, Captain. That really depresses me, Lynch. Because one day you'll be shaking hands with Morgan in hell. Oh, I'll save my other hand for you, Captain. You don't have much time, Lynch. You're sure to make a mistake one day. And that's the day I'll own you. And it won't be just jail for you. You're too clever for that. It's the hanging one. That's what you want, and I'll see you get what you want. It's the least I can do. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Oh, I will. Yeah? I will, Lynch. Mm -hmm. You hear? <laughs> Doctor. What are you doing here? I was on my way to town. I saw the people. Why? What's going on? Something I'd rather you not see. A hanging. I've never seen a hanging. Nor will you see this one. Now, Father, I may be a woman, but I am also a doctor. Death is nothing new to me. This is not death, Tanya. This is legalized murder. Maybe she should stay to see the difference. Hmm. Maybe she should. Thank you, Charles. Don't thank him yet. Oh, 
Oh. Who is she? Oh, I don't know, Captain. I could make inquiries. That won't be necessary. Are you a pretty jack? And what if I ain't? I've made any difference, just you idiot. a short step from here. Why didn't I ever cut your throat? Ready. Requiem eternam, dona ei, domine, et lux perpetua luce a tei. Amen. <laughs> Tanya knows about the animals. But how? I don't know. She asked me why you still had them, and I didn't... What are we going to do? Not Tell now, you mustn't find out what... Whoa! Whoa! Hey, up, Baron. Good work, Lynch. Good work. Thank you. Charles. Go on, Turner. Earn your money. Yes, sir, Baron. I really like doing business with you. It's clean and it's quiet. Was it difficult? It's difficult to drink in a bottle of whiskey. And you can see that's not very difficult. Do you trust these men? I trust no one. Especially a man who drinks. But don't worry, Baron. No one will spill any tears over Jack Morgan's empty grave. He murdered the only person who gave a damn for him. But what about next week? Another very special order, huh? I don't know. I may not need you anymore. Sorry to hear that, Baron. I like your money. What'll I do without it, huh? You'll get along. No, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Good night. How much will I? One liter this time. Sorry, but I couldn't. I was hoping you wouldn't do this. So this is why you no longer use the animals. Human transplants. Tanya, will you please leave? But I can help you. You don't understand. I do, Father. I do. What are you going to do with the brain? Tanya. Please. Father, will you both stop treating me like a child? I'm a doctor, a surgeon. I even think like you do. I. No. Not impossible, Tanya. 
But the heart, the brain, you have to keep them alive. Yes, we've done it before. Inside another human body? We don't need a human body. But you are going to put Morgan's heart and brain into that creature? Tanya, no more questions. But Bob... I don't want you to get involved. If anything should go wrong, the law would hold you equally responsible. And I don't want that to happen. Soon I'll tell you everything. Please be patient. I'll try. Good luck. Is everything ready? Ready. A few more seconds. I hope Mr. Morgan's brain is as cooperative. It will be, Charles. So for the past 20 years, my experiments with animal transplants have been pointed to this week. All the abuses I have endured from my friends, all the accusations against my sanity and worse will be thrown into their sanctimonious faces. Looking for something? There's clouds. I need a storm for my final step, an electrical storm. For only lightning will give the creature life. That's why I haven't transplanted the heart and the brain. Oh, I can keep them alive indefinitely in the laboratory, but once I transplant them, they'll survive only a few hours unless they're activated by lightning. I want to see how you keep them alive. You shall. You will succeed, Father. I will. I promise you I will. And the medical world will be brought to its knees. I want that so much, to see you realize your dream, something that no one will ever take away from you. They won't have to. I'll give it to them. Glad to.
Doctor. Quick. Just below the cortex. In the white matter? No. Further down. In the gray matter. See? The hypothalamus is damaged. It's no good, Doctor. It must be repaired. There isn't time. We must make the time. You cannot use a damaged brain. To what extent is it damaged? Perhaps it's minor. And if it isn't, the hypothalamus is the main center of the automatic nervous system. You may be creating something that cannot function. What good would that be? To give it life and just let it lie there, nothing more? We'll have to take that risk. What about anger and pleasure? Two emotions connected to the damaged part of the brain. Two vital emotions. Either one in excess could be devastating. Correct the damage first. There isn't time, Charles. Every minute cuts into the life of that heart. Twenty years, I can't throw away twenty years by minutes. But think, Doctor. Think, no. Instinct, instinct changes the world, not thought. And my instinct tells me to transplant that brain right now. If you won't help me, I'll do it alone. Very well, then. Thank you, Charles. Come forward. Another step. Another step.
a live tank. Put Morgan in it. Then you can go to Harris. Please, Charles. I don't know, Tanya. What could you hope to gain? Time. I'm to think of some way to save my father's reputation. Please, Charles, didn't you love him? You know I did. So do it for him. And for me, Charles. Do it for me. Please. And this is where you found him? Yes, exactly how he is. I see. Very interesting. Well, this is the first time I've been in the laboratory of our town's most eminent citizen. He always kept his work so secret. Mm-hmm. Animal organs, I believe. Yes, of course. My father has been experimenting in animal transplants. Very interesting. You saw this robber, a big man, you say. Yes, he would have to be a very big man. Big enough to... Uh, you know. well, what did he steal? Nothing, as far as I can tell. I haven't had time to check everything. My father must have surprised him. Uh, I would think it was your father who was surprised. But uh, what would a... A robber be doing in a laboratory. He wouldn't have known it was a laboratory. He must have seen the light and he wanted to investigate. Perhaps. You said he was a very big man. How big would you say? I don't know. I was asleep. At least half a foot taller than you, Captain. Oh, really? That would make him more than seven feet tall. Are you sure, Dr. Marshall? Well, half a foot then. After all, he was running away when I saw him. I thought you said you saw him with the Baron early. Yes, but all that registered in my mind then was this hulk of a man gripping the Baron. I had just left him one hour before. I was overtired and couldn't sleep. Then I heard these footsteps passing my door. Could have been the Baron or Miss Tyler. No, the footsteps were heading for the laboratory. The Baron was already here, and Miss Tanya would never disturb him. So it had to be somebody who didn't belong here. And then you entered a few moments after this robber killed the Baron. I tried to stop him, but he threw me aside quite easily, and I couldn't... And that was the time when you saw him run out? Yes. But you weren't hurt? No, I wasn't. Oh, very fortunate. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure this has been quite an ordeal for both. Oh. Uh, by the way, the young man... Thomas. Thomas. Where was he? He doesn't live here. He comes each morning very early. Thank you. He didn't believe us. Of course he did. He just tried to impress me. You are marvelous, Charles. Thank you. What now? Now we wait. Nice, cheerful place you have here, Lynch. Very fashionable. It's like something out of an insane asylum. Yes, you do have the taste of a connoisseur. The taste of a man who truly knows what is obscene, vulgar, erotic, and simply grotesque. Very clever the way everything blends together. And things seem to balance. Not one piece out of place. Not one inch of space wasted. It's truly remarkable. I am impressed. Lynch. You're such an ugly man. Mm. What's wrong, Captain? All your cells empty this morning? Oh, on the contrary. As a matter of fact, some friends of yours were kind enough to spend the night with me. I don't have any friends. Oh, but you do. There's Simon Burke and Harry Morris, and not to mention Jim Turner, and that other fellow, the little one with the hunchback. Yeah, were they drunk? Very. 
You see, they started a brawl in the tavern, the sawmill. You do know the police. Vaguely. But what does four drunks uh, have to do with me? Huh? You see, the fight was over which one of them was going to pay for the entire bill, which was quite substantial. Your friends drink, you know. Uh, you still haven't answered my question, Captain. Oh, haven't I? No. Well, let me put it this way. Where do four such men come upon enough money for each of them to be able to pay for himself and the other three? Maybe they earned it. Maybe. But doing what? <laughs> Simon and Harry, they can't earn much. After all, how many hangings do we have? <laughs> Not enough to suit you, Captain. Lynch, you disappoint me. I don't pass sentence on anyone. I only arrest them. Uh, drinking alone? I know I could put the pieces together if I could just figure out what went on at the Frankenstein estate. Sir, the people of the village are gathered outside, and they seem to be out of control. They want to speak to you right away. Peter, you better speak to them. I can't face them just yet. I have some thinking to do. Yes, sir. Quiet down, I told you. It was a monster. Quiet, please. I saw him kill Sam. At once, I can't understand anything. Now, for God's sake, explain to me what has happened. Go on, John. Tell him what you saw. It wasn't a man, I tell you. It wasn't. It was a monster. Yeah. That's right. And if you don't do something, then we're going to. Isn't that right? Right. Yeah. And who's going to kill him? You, Sam? Are you Mrs. Carter? John? What about you, Zach? That's what I thought. Well, get all this nonsense. The only thing to do is return to your homes and let us handle this thing. Now, go on, all of you. No Come on, let's go. It's a monster. Something that pays a police captain's wages. I'm not laughing, Lynch. Just tell me what kind of work they do for you since you have no legitimate business. Oh, I know you're a banker of sorts, loaning out money at exorbitant rates of interest. But you're hired help. What? They are collectors. They collect money for me. Yes, I'm sure they do. Well, I'll leave you to your whatever a man like you calls it. The same thing a man like you calls it. One day, Lynch, you're going to tell me the wrong thing at the right time. <clears throat> Captain! What is it, Peter? Sarah Wells and Fred Benson. They were both murdered. John Masters, he was with Sarah. He saw the killer. He says it was a monster. A what? A monster. He says it was a huge thing, ugly with one eye. He'll tell you. Come in. It's useless, Tanya. You won't find the solution there. There isn't one anywhere. I have the solution, Charles. I'm only looking for a way to make it happen. Will you help me? If I can. Will you help me? I cannot commit myself until I know what you consider the solution. Another creature. Tanya, it took your father and me three years to construct the first one. Mine will take less than three weeks. Even if it took three hours, it would be too late. Then there's been another killing. Two. I didn't want to tell you. I was in town today. Everyone in the village is speaking about the monster. That is what they call your father's life's work, a monster. And they're right. They are not right. My father was a genius, and his creation will... It will do nothing but kill. You don't understand. Even without the damage to the brain, the creature has the mind of a murderer. It kills for the sake of killing. It must be destroyed, and Harris will destroy it. How can a man destroy it? No, Charles. There's only one solution. To create a second creature. You'll be creating another monster. Not a monster, an executioner. Our creature will kill my father's murderer. No, it's impossible. Even if you found the right brain, your creature, despite the superhuman strength induced by the lightning, 
it would need a physical body strong enough to support it. Where would you find such a man? If I do find him, will you help me? And that's my proposition. 500 pounds if you find me the right person. Yeah, well, what makes you think I can? My father told me. It's all written in his diary. He gave you a lot of money in the three years. I don't want money from you. I see. I knew you would. Just for one night. Then I'll find you your man. It won't cost you a thing. It will. I feel nothing but repulsion for you. I don't give a damn how you feel about me. It ain't your feelings I want. Your price is too high. Then go peddle your money elsewhere. I think Captain Harris would find my father's diary very enlightening. <laughs> my selling corpses wouldn't surprise anyone. But your father buying them, now that would give everybody plenty to talk about, eh? Wouldn't it, miss? Now, think about it. No one else can help you. No one. After all, what's one night out of your life? Can't kill you. And after, you can take a bath and everything will be brand new again. Hmm. I'll kill him. I'll kill him! You need a drink, Charles. I don't see why you're so upset. A man like Lynch cannot be taken seriously. Still, I would kill him for even suggesting that Thank you... Thank you, Charles. I didn't know that you felt so much about my reputation. I'm sorry. Of course you do. You are a gentleman. And so you only think of me as untouchable. You're wrong. Am I? Do you ever think of touching me? Tanya, please. Does it really bother you to know that a man like Lynch desires me? No. Only that he was vulgar enough to reveal it to you. You never really believed in my father's dream. You only stayed because of me. What if I did? Then why didn't you tell me? Because you were afraid. You've always been afraid. You are afraid now. We don't need Lynch. All we need is each other. I found him. Thomas. Thomas? Yes, Thomas. Physically, he's perfect. His body's strong and beautiful. Be honest, wouldn't you like to have such a body? What does that have to do with me? Everything, because you love me. I know you do. But you've never done anything about it. Instead of your love for me giving you strength, you let it melt your spine. Stop. You let it fester inside of you until Stop. all you could do was to look at me with those weird, Stop. hurt eyes. With the eyes of an old man with the eyes of a cripple, a cripple who could never even dream that I could love him. Could you? Could you love me? Yes. If you look like Thomas. Then love Thomas! I can't love Thomas. He hasn't your mind. Think of it. Think of me. Think of possessing me. Would you like to have my body bend to you? Would you like to make love to me? Yes. Yes. Yes! You can. I can make it possible. My brain and my heart in Thomas's body. His heart is as gentle as yours. Thomas, with your brain, is a man I could truly love. No. I won't kill Thomas for you. I'm not a murderer. You were ready to kill Lynch. That was different. Murder is murder. Do it, Charles. I'll help you. I'll be your wife. I'll give you everything. Go. You tell Miss Tanya Mr. Lynch is here. No, no, go, go. I said tell. Go, go, go. Mm, all right, I will call back tomorrow. Go. Have you heard anything about her and Mr. Marshall getting married? Huh? Go. Ah, you're not very much help, go. are you? Ah. Go.
like it. Yes, very much. I've had that ring for a long time. I'd never dared hope to see you wearing it. Charles. Don't think of Thomas now. Think of him after. The way he will be. In here. Come. In here. He's in there. It's a terrible sight. Oh, it's a terrible sight. Oh, terrible. It's a terrible sight. in my life. I'm here. Ranch, you cheated me. Tom Lynch is dead. Last night. Killed by the same man who murdered your father. And Lynch wasn't robbed either, Miss Frankenstein. It's Mrs. Marshall now. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And this man, anyone seen him? Anyone still alive? The young man who was with Sarah Wills, uh, John Masters. And this Mr. Masters, what did he see? He claims it wasn't a man. He said it was a monster. But he was too frightened to satisfy me. However, there's one more witness I would believe. Who is he? Seth Atkins' son, he saw the murderer kill his mother. But the lad's in shock. If and when I'm ever able to talk to him, I'll... Poor boy. Uh, sorry to bother you, uh, Mrs. Marshall. I'll see you out, Captain. Thank you. You know, I've been wondering, Mrs. Marshall, why would you visit Tom Lynch, especially at his place and at night? The Baron owed him money, and my wife went to pay it back. Wouldn't it have been better to send for him? Really, Captain? A man like Lynch here? Of course. But then I would think Dr. Marshall should have gone, not you. It was my father's business which made it mine. Nobody else's. Quite. What I don't understand is why would your father owe Lynch money? I find your probing thoroughly impertinent. It always is. Thank you again, and good night. Oh, one thing more. You don't believe in monsters, do you? Of course not. I do. Wait till we've finished. You're worse than Lynch was. Hey, Jim. Jim. Are you sure Dr. Marshall will want it? Am I sure? Sure, I'm sure. Whatever the Baron was doing with the corpses, Dr. Marshall was helping him. Oh, it must be sure that he's still doing what they were doing. <laughs> He'll thank us good. <laughs> to hell with these thanks. He'll thank us good. Money. As long as he pays us good. Come on, this ain't my favorite way to make a, a living. Hey, I ain't gonna... Jim! 
Shut up. Listen. I don't hear I was here early, early, like always. I keep a clean place, you know. I always clean it every morning when I come. I see. Thank you very to, much, Mr. Stone. Uh, clean it up. Yes, sir. I always try to keep a clean place, a clean place. That's what yes, I keep. Yes, I understand. A nice, quiet place. Thank you very much. Great That'll problems. be all. It doesn't make any sense. It's beginning to make a lot of sense. Get those shovels. Thank you. Dig it up. Then dig up every one of them dated within the last two months. Just what do you expect to find, sir? Not a damn thing. <laughs> no, Thomas. I wasn't laughing at you. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. No, I'm not mad. Never mad at you. Well, that's very kind of you. Come here, I'll help you. Mm. There. I will do it. On the chair. My brother. Your brother? You must have the Tommy. wrong... Tommy! Thomas Stack. Ah, he's not here. Have you tried at his home? I went there first. I've not seen him for a few days. Perhaps he's gone on a trip. Tommy? Where would he be? He was never out of the county. It's possible. Perhaps my father's death had something to do with it. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yes, Thomas was very fond of him, and his death must have shocked him. Oh, yes, perhaps. 
I'm really sorry, but I can't help you. I'm sure Tommy will be here soon. Are you living at the inn? I shall be. Ah, fine, I'll tell him. He'll be so happy to see you. Thank you, Miss... Mrs. But... Marshall. I'm so sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Marshall. Oh, no trouble. We're all very fond of your brother. I'm sure you are. Good day. And Julia, please stay in your room. I've got enough to worry about with the murderer. Now Tom is missing. Oh, fine, Tommy. Don't worry, I will. That Mrs. Marshall, I didn't like her. I know her kind. She could destroy a man and enjoy it. Any man who is sensitive and gentle like Tommy, Julia, I still feel that she... he's all right. Relax. I'm trying very hard to believe. So far, I can't. Now, don't worry. Ah, well, she seems like a nice person. But I mean, she's no Mrs. Marshall. Now, that woman makes me real nervous. Her father's experiments with animal transplants. Yes, it's ludicrous. animal transplants. That's what she said. And Dr. Marshall didn't refute her. Why should he? But what do you need corpses for? How do you talk to a corpse, Peter? Let's go. And you'll need two pints of my blood in this sack. The blood is pumped out of the sack by these four dry cell batteries. Dry cell. Compliments of Count Alessandro Volta. Don't look so surprised, Charles. I've read my father's medical journals, but I've heard of Volta for some years. Also Luigi Galvani and his experiments with producing electricity by electrochemical action. Ah. Hmm? Very simple, but effective. The copper coils take the electrical impulse and send it into the sack contracting and expanding it like operating a bellows, whereby the blood is pumped out of the sack into this tube down here and to the brain. And you have a continuous flow from sack to brain and back. What about oxygen for the brain? Liquid oxygen. Fill the container with this first. Connect the two tubes to the brain, then place the brain inside the glass container. And it can live indefinitely in this state? Indefinitely. In my father's journal, he wrote that he did try to help Thomas. What went wrong? Nothing, except that Galvani's principle would have turned Thomas into a vegetable. How much current did you give him? Enough to help him, and not as much as to hurt him. Tonight, you and I will help Thomas to become a whole human being. And my father, he will live again, but with the fame he was meant to have. Charles? I liked him, Tom. I really did. Think of tonight, Charles. Only of tonight. Zach, you damned fool. I ought to lock you up and forget that you even exist. Somebody had to do something. Something, yes. But you did nothing except almost get somebody killed, including yourself. Well, I was right anyway. That thing ain't human. We must have put 20 rounds into it. It kept coming. Big as God Almighty. 20 rounds, Zach? Well, at least ten. Maybe not quite ten, but a good four or five. Zach, are you sure? I swear it, Captain. It was as close to me as you are. And I'm telling you, it's ugly. It ain't nothing human. All my men saw it. Right, John? All right, Zach. Go home. But if I ever even hear of you trying... You've got to kill it, Captain. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you better do it and quick. Are you threatening me, Zach? Ain't no threat, Captain. People are talking. They're saying that Baron Frankenstein is responsible. They're saying that he created it that monster. It killed him, remember? But it didn't kill his daughter. What does she have to do with it? Well, you know how people are, Captain, especially when they're scared. Right now, they're so scared they may do anything, just anything. Something real crazy, maybe. To them, the name Frankenstein is six leagues below Satan himself. And they don't care who's wearing it. 
Come on, John. I'm trying to find your father's murder, Miss, Mrs. Marshall, and I don't see how that could be an intrusion. Of course you're right. Please forgive me. I've been up all night with my husband. Then he's seriously ill. It could be. He's resting now, and after my breakfast, so will I. Have you made any progress, Captain? Not much, but the murderer has. Two more men have been killed, Jim Turner and Bill Jessup. They worked for Lynch. Oh, you wouldn't know them. They're not exactly the kind you'd invite to tea. What's your interest in Thomas, if I may ask? Nothing much, just that an old friend of mine asked me to say hello to him. You mean his sister told you to look for him? I thought I'd been quite explicit yesterday. It's obvious that she didn't believe me. You could say that. Do you believe me, Captain? Now, why would you lie to me? Don't women ever lie to you? All the time, Mrs. Marshall. Charles. We cannot wait for the storm. It may never come in time. I know what to do. I've got to generate enough electrical energy to reactivate your brain and Thomas's heart. It can be done, darling. You and my father proved it with Thomas. Only we're afraid to kill him by giving him too much current. Once your brain is transplanted, then it won't matter. I can't kill what is already dead. It's the only way to save you. And myself. Everything is ready, my darling. Do not be afraid. Soon we'll be together again. nearly had it that time, Charles. Once more, darling. Once more.
can't hear you, darling. expect me to believe such a thing. It's true, Julia. I've seen it. And you think that Tommy is somehow involved with this monster? Well, not in creating it, but I think he found out about it by chance. And Mrs. Marshall? She's part of it, too? Yes, she's lied too many times not to be. And she and Dr. Marshall, they would have to kill Tommy, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they? Maybe not. Who would believe Tommy? I would. You would, too, Paul. Head is straight for the Frankenstein estate. Let's go, John. When I remove the stitches and your hair grows back, no one will see the difference. In the meantime, this wig will do perfectly. Now, Charles, put your hands like this. When I release the paper, you try to catch it between your hands before it reaches the floor. But you must look into my eyes. Bravo, Charles. <laughs> Reflex is perfect, pulse normal. <laughs> Everything is normal. How could I possibly know our storm would come in time? Of course you couldn't. One thing more, Charles. You see that heavy table over there? That one? Go and lift it. on, Charles. Lift it. All my life I've wanted to do something like that. You can now, Charles. You're a young man again. Handsome, strong, intelligent, and beautiful man. This is Marshall! This is Marshall! What is it? It's Captain Harris. I insist on seeing you. <laughs> you must see him, Tanya. He'll just keep on coming back. Come on. Go and see him. Hurry. Go. 
I must see Dr. Marshall. Impossible. He's still extremely ill. I cannot permit I'm not asking your permission. Henry, in Paris, this is a... Yes, it is, Mrs. Marshall. I shall Marshall. report you to your superior. You do that. Please leave my home. Not until I see your husband. Really, you have no right, Captain Harris. My husband is very ill. That's far enough, Captain. I'm sorry, Captain, but my illness is quite contagious. You shouldn't risk coming any closer. I want to speak to you alone. Whatever you have to say, I want my wife to hear it. Very well. I came to warn you about the monster that you and Baron Frankenstein created. I hold you responsible in the deaths of eight people, including the Baron. Of course you can prove it. If I could, I would be here to arrest you. I know that you are my proof. I want you alive, Doctor. Why should anyone want to kill my husband? Not anyone. Only the monster he helped to create. Of those killed, four were responsible for giving it life. You, Doctor, are the fifth and last. That's absurd, Captain. How could Lynch and those other two... By men... providing your father and your husband with corpses. I don't have to tell you how they were used. How else are we to know what you are talking about? Those jars in the laboratory, it won't be difficult to prove they contain human organs and not animal. No, Doctor. You never considered the creature might not appreciate your miracle. That's why he killed the Baron and three other men. That's why he must kill you. Why didn't he kill Charles when he killed my father? Because your husband wasn't in the laboratory at the time. This is the most extraordinary fable I've ever heard. You really disappoint me, Captain. A robber killed the Baron. As for those other two pyramids of integrity, anyone could have had sufficient reason to kill them. Perhaps it's your incompetence that's led your imagination awry. I suggest you take a look at Very well. I've warned you. Remember, lies can't keep you alive, Doctor. But I can. Your concern is a great comfort to me. Good night, Captain. I don't know what you've done with Thomas, but I'll find out. And when I... Don't bother to see me out, Mrs. Marshall. I won't. We must get away tonight, Charles. No, Tanya. But darling, Harris and his men will find the monster. They'll destroy it. They don't know how. I do. Every available man, Peter. I want this place surrounded. And make sure the men tell no one, especially their wives. Now hurry. Yes, sir. Find me tonight. Tonight it will be here. Charles. show the world that my father didn't fail, that he wasn't insane. Think of us, Charles, the power, the fame. No, I must kill it. Yes, you're right. Kill it. Why did you change your mind, Tanya? Because you know that no matter which of us survives, you still win? You do know. You've always no. known. No, you're right, Charles. <laughs> It's Captain Harris. See if he's dead. Just unconscious. All right, let him sleep off. Let's go!
Your men, quickly. Damn it, Peter. What's she doing here? But, Captain, I... Not just... now. The monster's in the house. Yes, sir. And so are Zack and his mom. And that... with torches. Fool. You stay here. Yeah. Tommy, what are you doing there? there? You've no. got to get out of here. I told you to stay 